So in the last video, we uh, looked at runoff analysis of our brick uh, surface. And we were able to get some visualization of that with the arrows that um, showed the, the flow that water would take to run off the surface. Now we want to actually analyze the slope of this surface. So hopefully we can get a little more information out of it. Um, so, so to do that, we want to uh, find the slope, which is rise over run. Uh, we need to calculate rise over run of each one of these uh, arrows to then determine what the actual slope is. Um, so we want to take, uh, take the vector that we're using. I'm going to get this vector right here. Start with this as a new vector. Uh, and then I'm going to unitize it. Unitizing a vector uh, will set its length to 1. So however long the vector is, we set it to uh, 19 right here, but it'll set it now to 1. And then um, what I want to do is actually break this vector up into its components. So if I come up here to deconstruct vector, I can have an x, y, and a z uh, of the vector. And so we know that the z is going to be the rise. Uh, to get the run, we actually want to make a new vector that has the x and y direction of the vector, but doesn't change in z. So it doesn't slope down like this, but just goes horizontal in the x and y direction of whatever that vector is. So we can build a new vector. Um, putting these together like that. And actually, I don't think it matters if we have, uh, no, we'll use that one. We'll use the vector x, y, z instead of the point x, y, z. It should give us the same result, result um, but just for consistency's sake and not to confuse anybody, we'll have deconstruct vector and vector x, y, z. So then, um, in some cases, we saw in in um, class that if you have a perfectly horizontal surface, you would actually have a um, a length of this vector at zero. Uh, so when we're di when we're dividing rise over run, we don't want we don't want the a zero divisor. And so we added a slight, just a, just a very slight number um, to make that not zero. So that length, we added something like 0 0.001 or something like that. It's very small. It won't really change the vector that much. So it'll be okay. And then we started to do our rise over run. So we had some division we knew that this is our rise, this is our run, we organize this some way so it's readable. This, if you click on the line in Rhino 6, you can move these around. If you have Rhino 5, you can't do that. Doesn't actually change anything though. Um, and so this should give us a value that's associated with that slope. You can see some of them are negative. So um, if we want, we can change this to positive with our absolute value. And then we want to, um, this, this would actually be our the number for our slope. Um, so instead of using that number, we can actually use that to give us some visualization back in, in Rhino. So we can say, take the slope and maybe adjust the color. So we had an XYZ color before. 
and that takes a number from 0 to 1. So we actually need to remap these numbers, which are not from 0 to 1. We can find their bounds. And map them from zero to one. So um, let's give it some number, and we put that in the color. Uh, that's not a very good color. Okay, this is blue. We'll try that. And you can see we have some really bright blues over here, but most of them are kind of dark. Um, so let's try to actually. Um, adjust that a little more so that it's brighter across the board. So instead of using the bounds, which we know goes from 0, 0, 0.095 to 3.4, um, we can actually actually set our set our own. So I can say from zero. to 3.4. I'm going to make a new domain. I'm going to construct a domain. Shouldn't change too much if I do that. But now if I change this, you can see I can brighten every everything up. So this is just uh, sort of scaling those results a little bit so you can see how they're they're used. Um, so then you can adjust adjust those colors accordingly. Another thing we can do is actually use this number for the length, right? So we can um, plug this into here. So all the ones that are relatively flat actually go away because they're pretty small and only the high high slope numbers stick around. Now we still don't have much control over that and it's just this value so we could actually give uh, a multiplier for that as well. So this number, and we can say um, 0 0.1 to 2.0 or something like that. I don't actually know what number we should get, but we can see, okay, if it's, that's too small, we can scale to the point that it covers as much as we want. Okay, so I'm going to come down here and group this. We're going to call this slope, slope value. 